we could buy my sister-in-law at the time if we would have our uh, baby christened if she could be the godmother because she could never have children. So she said, Lord, the only minister we knew, though, happened to be Reverend Talkington. And uh, he, would go, he would drop by. I didn't know this at the time, but when I asked my husband about it, he said, well, you know, Brother Talkington, my husband had gotten out of the military. I might be talking too fast. Because I'm just, we're just out there tonight. We are going to do what God says to do. And I do know one thing. After praying all day today, I know we're going to pray. We're going to pray. But we've got to talk, you know, I don't testify a lot. But the thing is, the bottom line is, as a body. And why, even for me personally, having that connection with him. And that's why I'm sharing my background. I didn't have that. But I wanted to know him. I thought, oh, I'll be a nun, then I'll get to know God. And I didn't. Didn't become a nun. But when this when this minister, we were looking for a minister, he just happened to be in the neighborhood. And he'd come by. My husband had a second job. He was out of the military at that time. We were going through a lot of stuff at that time. And my husband told me, well, you know, Brother Talking, he comes by every once in a while and gets gas. He just comes by and gets gas. I said, well, do you, do you know how to get in touch with it? So he, he did the next time he saw him. And they lived, they just happened to live right down the road from us. And they took us under their wing and had us go to their house. And we were going to talk about having my daughter christened. Well, we were there for four hours. My daughter was, it was 8 o'clock. My daughter was a, a, a colicky baby. This was my second child. And I thought I was going crazy. I laid her on my lap. We were in a little... Uh, 8 by 12 or 24 foot trailer. They had four teenagers. They had a couch on one side of the living room, couch on the other side with quilts laying on each side. And I'll tell you something, that baby did not cry once. And I'll never forget the feeling I felt. I felt, I, I didn't know what I felt at the time. But it was so peaceful. I don't know what we talked about, but we never made arrangements to have her Chris. But his wife took me under her wing. And she came over, she took me to her, the commissary, they still had privileges. My husband was an alcoholic and he didn't give us, give me money. That's one reason I, I was that close. I didn't know how close I was to leave. But when an alcoholic is married to the bottle, they make sure that that gets taken care of first. And it was very painful for me, it hurt me. But God was already working. And she took me to the commissary and they bought baby food and all they did was love me. Uh -huh. And she told me about camp meeting. They were they were with the Church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee. And she talked to me about camp meeting. I didn't know what that was, but I could bring my babies and all of that. I got scared when it got closer to get to camp meeting. And she came to pick me up and I wouldn't answer the door. <laughs> and I did I never did that. But I would not answer that door when I was petrified. I just never forget it. And two long weeks later, two long weeks I didn't hear from her. When she got back, she called me up and she said, sweetie, she or honey, she said, or should, 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 honey, whatever. But she called me and said, you know, are you, are you all right? Yeah. Never once mentioned about him, except that she said, well, I missed you. And I was boo-hooing by then. So she came, she said, why don't you come to lunch to my house? So she picked me up, because I had no transportation. I never knew when my husband was coming home or not. And um, she picked me up, took me to her house for lunch. And we just sat there mm -hmm. over bread and butter and iced tea. I can't tell you what we talked about. But she did ask me if I wanted to go to church. Now, a good Catholic knows to go to church, but you don't go to any church outside the Catholic church. That's apostasy. But I wasn't a devout Catholic at the time either. I had already been searching. I was going to the Methodist church around the corner from us. They had a lively young preacher there. And the Sunday I went, I took my babies with me. So I was searching. I mean, I can talk about it now, but while I was walking through it, I didn't know what I was walking through. Amen. And when she asked me if I wanted to go to church with her, I said, yes. It was a Wednesday night. I went. My husband happened to be home. It was okay. I left the children with him. They were asleep. And we walked in the church and I sat on the back row. They sat, we sat on the back row. And I remember opening up the hymnal and I didn't, I still to this day can't tell you except I always say it the same. It was either the second verse of the first song 
or the first verse of the second song. Uh -huh. All I know it was the Church of God hymnal that was open. I don't know what we were, what was being sung, mm -hmm. but I remember seeing my tears dropping on the page. I was, uh -huh. I was, my tears were dripping, were on the page. And she leaned over and she said, "Honey, would you like to go to the altar?" And I remember crying and saying, yes, and any good Catholic knows how to go and kneel, let me tell you. And I had a mini skirt up to here, you know, it was the 60s. I, I had a mini skirt, I was still looking for who I was, what was my identity, even as, as a young wife. And we went to, I went to the altar, there was a bit of a platform, and I was the service that night, and I wept for three and a half hours. That was church that night, Wednesday night. And all I remember is hearing people in the background. I knew there were people in the church, but Jesus showed himself to me on my face. He showed me himself. I could see him. My eyes were shut and I was weeping. He stood behind me and I didn't, he didn't say anything, but he showed me my life. And it was like the old cartoons, the bouncing ball, sing along. He showed me my life, had it, how, where it had been, where it was at that point and where it was going. Just like that. Bing, bing, bing. And I wept and wept and I heard a song rise up in me. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more. And I knew, but I understood what he was telling me. I was ready to say, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. He showed me at that moment, not only himself, but where I was. I didn't pray a sinner's prayer. And I'm not saying that you, you don't have to, because I've done a lot of repentance since then, let me tell you that. But that was my beginning of my walk with the Lord. And it just even goes in even with our lesson, you know, even tonight about the supernatural, about who he is and what he can do without our help or interference uh -huh. right. or whatever. Yeah. Now I understand things. Yeah. But the bottom line is I, I, I received him right away. I sat down on the altar and after the church and I'm wiping that scatter off of me and I'm trying to pull down my mini skirt and all I could see was all these older saints. This was up in Lakewood, New Jersey, uh -huh. the Church of God, spirit filled. Because I heard a young woman on her face praying in tongues. I didn't know what that was, but having been raised in a lot of different cultures, yeah. I was used to different languages, so it didn't scare me, but it, but it intrigued me. It's, it, I was curious about it. Uh -huh. It drew my ear. I thought, wow. And that was just the beginning. Within a week, I realized I'd go home. I went, went home from church that night, and, and I was in church that Sunday sitting on the second row. Sat up in front or on the second row ever since then. But I did not know how to pray. And I remember it was 11.30 at night after a Wednesday night service. I panicked. I don't know how to pray. And I called the pastor and his wife. And they told me, they got out of bed and they said, can you come over? I said, oh yes. And I remember that weeping. Went in, pastor, they're both in their bathrobes. They greeted me at their front door. And the pastor greeted me. And, and his wife was right there and he said, he said, why don't you go in with my wife? And I went into the, to like the study. And uh, so I went with her and we sat, we knelt down, sat and knelt on the floor. And she said something very simple. She said, well, you've received him. He's in your life, isn't he? He's in your heart. And I said, oh, yes, but I love him so much. I don't know, I don't know what to say. All I knew were formal prayers. Our Father who art in heaven, uh -huh. hail Mary, full of grace, the uh -huh. Lord is with thee. Yeah. Blessed art thou. I, that's all I knew. All right. She directed me for the first time. Mm -hmm. She said, honey, all you need to do mm -hmm. is tell him how you feel. Yeah. I went, what? The love was so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The night I came to him, I didn't, I forgot this part. I felt like I had somersaulted that night at the altar. And I actually fell into his love. I was changed the next day. I mean, I was changed. I had the green and the trees were so green I could see the chlor the chlorophyll going through. The Spirit of God really had me, but I didn't know all that. And I went through every step. That be baptized? Oh yeah, I'm going to be baptized. I, I wanted anything and everything that He had, and I knew nothing about Him. And I would ask my what I called them my spiritual pants, my questions, and they told me later on. They said, "Daughter." <laughs> You kept us on our knees. You were like a sponge. You asked more questions and it kept us 
on our knees, but they were happy. And see, that's what we need these days, Amen. to realize who we are, who, we are. who he is, Hallelujah. and what a privilege we have to have a direct connection with him. Amen. That night with that pastor's wife, she just directed me very simply. Uh -huh. She said, all you have to do is tell him how you feel. Amen. Tell him you love him. Yeah. Ooh, that was oh, awful yeah. intimate. Uh -huh. But I did. Okay. And I wept and cried. And as I went to church, then I heard the word, and then I learned to start reading. And, and whatever the Lord would lead me, I would read. I'd just soak up everything I could, not even realizing what I had. And that's the experience that, that we start out with. And he never tires. He never tires. But when I realized more and more in my latter years and now, the Lord keeps speaking that in my ear. You might not, as we're older, we might... We might not have as much strength in our physical body, in the natural, but we have a power that far surpasses, and it's the, it far surpasses our natural body. And the fact that we have that direct connection with the Father, our Creator, He is our Father, number one, and that's how I learned who He was first, that He was my Father. And when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord would take me up. I was abandoned as a child. So he led me to the word before I ever heard the word. So he does lead by his spirit. But we need to realize that this is part of our mandate in, as LCI. We are a praying church. Why? God has given that. That is an anointing that he, I'm not teaching the lesson, but the fact is we're going to get together and we're going to pray because you're getting up here and we're going to pray. Those ribs, those ribs, this lady, the enemy wants to tear her apart and it's not going to happen. I wasn't sure you'd be here tonight, but I did tell the pastor, we are going to pray before we do anything else. We usually do a testimony service and all that, but I just feel that urgency and the fact is we need to do it with joy because we have have power Hallelujah. and the anointing Jesus gave us that yes, that anointing yes. he gave us by his spirit but he said we who will lay hands on the sick we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover hallelujah so we're going to get out of our seats if you don't mind hallelujah let's just come together as a body and let's pray I wrote I wrote all these things down first of all are there any other And she said, little old lady, I don't know who anybody was. All I saw when I saw people out there, everybody, everybody's hair was white. Uh -huh. I mean, I had vision. Yeah. I was in the glory already, didn't know what that was then. And they didn't preach about that then, but I sure enough know what it is now. Everybody had white hair. And everybody was beautiful. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she sat next to me at that altar, sitting on the altar, because I didn't know what to do. I was done just sitting there. And she said, do you believe you got saved? Never heard that Thank you, Father God. Something in my belly leaped. And I went, yes. And I was. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gave me words through his word. And also through those who took the time to listen to me and answer my questions. And which is something that's really lost in these days. Yeah. Can't just say just the young people. Right. It's young and old alike. Amen. Do we really want to learn and understand? Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh Amen. my God. Amen. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and make a few announcements that we have before we, we go on. Amen. Prayer, hallelujah. We got that done. All right.